Hi, I'm Jessica and this is Serena. Hi. And today we're going to be working on a bit of a stretch routine for our golfers out there. It's really great for anyone, to be quite honest with you. A lot of times our posture isn't really where we want it to be because we're forward all day, whether we're typing at a computer, sitting, commuting. So this is really a great opener for anyone. Um, but specifically for golf, we're looking for a lot of things with our clients. We want to work on their hip mobility and we want to work on their core strength, which is obviously really important for their swing, but we also want to make sure that they they have thoracic mobility, which is your ability to move almost at the center of your chest uh, so that you can protect the shoulders. Because if you don't have that ability to almost disassociate your upper body and lower body, then you can put a lot of strain on joints that don't need to take that extra strain, uh, especially with something repetitive like swinging. We know how much our golfers love the game, um, but we want them to be able to stay fresh and play throughout their entire life. So what I'm going to do today is show you a series of stretches that you can take on your own and do more repetitions on each side or more sets, but for the sake of keeping it short so that we can teach you a lot during this workout as well, or this stretch video as well, is to show you 10 different things that you can do at home. So we'll do them two times through and only five on each side. So again, expand it as you wish. Um, once you know the, the drills, you can do them at your leisure. So the first thing is, um, I always like to start up from the ground up. So the first set of things we're gonna be doing is right here, lying down on your mat. If you have a yoga block at home, that's great. If you have a stretch strap, that's also nice. You don't need one, but I'll show you why it might give you the better stretch. And um, a mini band. If you have ones that are the thicker ones that you can wear around your thigh, you can also have the smaller ankle ones as well. So we'll go ahead and get started with our first stretch, which is going to be a sideline stretch. So I'm gonna have Serena lie on her side. The first time through, I'll show you and talk you through it with Serena, and then I'll go ahead and join you guys for the second set. You want to have something to separate your knees. If you don't have a yoga block at home, get anything, a pillow, a rolled up towel, whatever the case may be. Bring these knees up towards so that you're almost at 90 degrees and stack your hands on top of one another. What you're going to do is open up towards the other side of the room and try to get your chest up towards the sky. Okay, you go until you feel slight pressure, but not pain, and then you come back and start from the beginning. Each time you do it, try to get a little closer. You want that shoulder blade a little closer to the ground, your chest a little closer straight onto the ceiling. If you have an issue with this, then you know your thoracic mobility is not really where it should be. So this is something that's really good for you. Work through it. So we're at three now. We're going to have her do two more, and then we're going to switch and do this on the other side. Breathe through these as well, right? So almost take a nice deep breath in at the start, and then exhale as you try and get that chest towards the ceiling. The other thing about the yoga block between the knees is it tries to set her pelvis so that she's not turning at the pelvis to the other side of the room. And her head goes along with them as well. Um, go ahead and turn to the other side. And we're gonna do five on this side as well. So same thing, nice setup, something between the knees. Bring the knees up to 90, stack your hands on top of each other, and open up towards the ceiling. You might notice a side to side difference. That's often very common in most people. Good, make sure you breathe through it. Each time, try to get a little further. Try to get that shoulder blade towards the floor, chest up to the ceiling, and her head is going along with it. Some people do try to prop their head up on a towel um, so that they have less pressure on their neck, but it, it, you move a lot during this, so I don't really, recommend it if you don't need one. Uh, if you have a little bit of a thicker yoga mat, that might be the trick. <laughs> Good, and one more. For all these, they're stretches, they're not exercises. You're not meant to pump them out repetition after repetition at a fast rate. Do them nice and slow, feel the movement, and try to feel that you're getting a little bit each time, a little bit more out of each time. All right, we're gonna give that a break before our second set. Now we're going to remove the yoga block, we're going to lie down on our back. We're gonna do a single leg bridge. Again, different than the double leg bridge because we're working more on hip mobility, glute strength, all that's great to get you a powerful swing from the ground up. So we're gonna have her put one foot up in the air and the other heel is gonna be close to the butt. She needs to press through the heel on this, not the toes. So it needs to be close enough to get where she needs to go. By bringing this foot up, we're gonna do five on each side. By bringing this foot up, she's actually tilting her pelvis under to activate her glutes. We're trying to get the glutes to fire, not the hamstrings. If you have overactive hamstrings, they might be wanting to fire right now. You might be getting a little bit of a cramp. Again, if you do, just straighten out the leg, breathe through it. Maybe you need to go back to double leg if this doesn't feel comfortable. 
meet yourself where you're at right now. But this is the goal, is to do this single leg bridge. Her hands are at her side to give her a little extra support. Head and neck are rested on the ground. You don't get a ton of movement here, right, Serena? You're not getting a huge range of motion. That's fine. That's where you need to be. Good, one more, and I'm gonna join you for the second set. We'll just go right into it. These are all stretches, so as long as everyone's breathing, we should be able to go right into the second set. So side lying, you'll block between the knees. Stack your hands, make sure your knees are at 90 degrees. And five, all the way over to the other side. Head goes along with it. Breathe through it, restack. Everybody goes at their own pace. And you stop where you need to stop. You don't try to get any extra leverage from using your shoulder, right? We're trying to work on that thoracic mobility. Last one. Good, and other side. By doing these more frequently throughout the week, you may even do more repetitions on one side. If you like the way that the sideline stretch feels when you're at the end of the movement, then you can hang out there for a few seconds as well. Breathe through it. Try to get a little deeper stretch. And last one. yoga block, place it to the side, single leg bridges are next, good, one knee is coming into the chest, the other uh, foot's going to be close to the, to the butt, and you're pressing up, try to keep that knee in the whole time so that your pelvis stays tucked under, hands are at your side for extra support, one more, and switch. Pushing through the heel, not the toes. And last one. Go ahead and bring your knees into the chest. Give yourself a hug. Wrap back and forth. Okay, we're going to go into our next set of two. You're going to need your stretch strap for this. If you don't have one at home, again, it's fine. You can actually use a few things. You could use a jump rope. You can use a towel. Depends on where your flexibility is. This is called an active leg lower. So what you're going to do is you're going to hold the strap so that you're getting a hamstring stretch on the leg that she's pulling on. You're meeting this leg at the same level, right, to start, and then you're going to drop the leg that's not in the strap towards the floor. Again, you want your comfortability. The stretch is on this leg. It's just an active stretch instead of holding it the whole time. And then she's coming up to the top. She's going to do this five times on each side. She's going to go as low as she can. Again, you want to feel a little discomfort, but not pain by any means. So you go where you need to and breathe through it. If you feel like you need something to help you stop, that you're having trouble controlling your leg, put something here, the yoga block, the foam roller, right? So that you have a target. And the nice thing about the yoga block is you can make it higher or lower, right? So you have a target that you're comfortable with. You can also put this against a table or a wall to help keep it straight, but you need a four corner wall. That doesn't always work out. Switch sides. Start at the top, both of them lined up, drop it towards the ground. Feel that stretch, Serena? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice job, last two. And the nice thing about the stretch strap also is that she can pull her toes towards her and get that extra straightening at the knee. job. All right, let's put the stretch strap over to the side. The next thing we're going to do is called the 90-90 rotation. The reason why it's called the 90-90 is 
is because you're keeping your hips and your knees at 90 degrees. She's placing a yoga block between her legs that's going to squeeze those inner thigh muscles together. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use a squishy ball. Again, rolled up towels work as well. You're gonna put your hands in the letter T and I'm gonna move out of the way because what she's gonna do is she's going to drop her knees towards one side. As far as she can go before she starts to feel this shoulder blade pulling off the floor, she's gonna stop there, come back to the center and then go to the other direction. She's gonna do five in each direction, so 10 total. Again, trying to keep that 90-90 position, breathing through it, and she knows her limitation when she starts to feel the shoulder blade come off the ground. So when we did this in the first sequence, we kept our lower body glued to the ground and moved our upper body for thoracic mobility. This time, we're gluing our shoulder blades to the ground and trying to get the mobility by moving at the hips. Again, great ability to practice that disassociation between your upper and lower body. See, she's going nice and slow, controlling it, making sure her lower back is staying pressed towards the ground. Breathing through it, really working hard. These are going to feel like workout exercises to you. If you're doing this, it's because you need to do them for thoracic mobility or hip mobility. It means it's not your strength. So it's going to feel like a workout. You are going to sweat. Breathe through it, take it at your pace. And again, we're going for reaching a limit where you don't feel pain, that it's, it's actually a stretch that is going to be beneficial for you. Is this the last one? Sure. Okay, uh, Serena doesn't count. <laughs> I use the horse. All right, great. All right, so now we're gonna go back to that stretch strap. I'm gonna do it without a stretch strap, not to show off, but because mine is nowhere to be seen right now. <laughs> But I do have the mobility where I still feel the stretch, but I can actually hold my other leg up. So if you can, you can hold your ankle or your shin and actually still feel the stretch. So we're gonna lower again five times on each side. And not everyone's gonna look like Jess and myself. We happen to have pretty good hamstring mobility. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Strap to the side, yoga walk in between the knees to squeeze, hips and knees at 90 degrees, arms out in the letter T, palms facing up, and you're going to drop your knees towards one side until you feel that shoulder blade start to come off the ground, then you know it's time to come back up, and we're going to the other side. exercises you're going to do are in what we call the quadruped position. So it's basically hands and knees. You want to make sure that you have a proper lineup before you do these two exercises. So we always want to make sure that our joints are in stack. So her wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in line and her knees and hips are in line as well. She is going to start by doing um, what we call quadru quadruped extension. So she's going to extend the opposite arm and the opposite leg out straight in front of her in one long line and then she's going to come back to the starting point. She's gonna do five on each side, so 10 total. She's making sure that she's staying squared, right? Her hips are staying squared off. They're not tilting too much to either direction. She's going nice and slow. And it's not important how high she gets her hand and her leg up to the sky. It matters how long she is. So she wants to pretend like something is out on that far wall in front of her and out on the wall behind her. She's trying to get as long as she possibly can. 
This is great for maintaining core. She's getting shoulder mobility out of it as well and hip mobility, but it's all working as she's moving her limbs. Her core has to help her stabilize. So it's really incorporating all those things that we talked about that are really important for the golf game. She's keeping her head neutral, right? She's not looking down or up. She's looking a little bit in front of her mat or at the top of her mat. If you want to really know whether or not you're squaring your hips off, if you're home and you're by yourself, you can put something on your back. I didn't tell her I was going to do that, so now it's a true test. And she's going to make sure that she keeps the yoga block on her. It'll stop you from going too fast, and it'll stop you from tilting your hips too much side to side. One more on each side. And she's keeping her toes tucked under. As you can see, that gives you a little more stability as well. The next set really goes and flows right along with this one. I like to do these two back to back. It's called a thoracic opener. So she's gonna place one hand behind her head. She's gonna drop her elbow towards that other wrist, keeping this arm completely straight. And then she's gonna turn out and open up towards the wall. She's pushing through this arm on the mat as well to try to get a little bit more rotation and then coming around towards the floor. Again, everything is stacked just like we started at the beginning. If you got a little out of whack while you were doing your quadruped extensions, just realign yourself before you do these. Really try to push off that mat for an extra twist. Breathe out at the end of the movement when you want to try to hold your breath. Good, breathe in here and breathe out on the way around. Each time, each time trying to get a little bit closer towards opening up towards that wall. One more and then we'll switch sides. Good, and switch. Good, so sinking down, touching that wrist and then opening all the way up towards the wall. Four more, and then I will join you for the second move. Again, just like we said before, she's trying to keep her hips squared off, right? So when she's coming over to this side, she's not moving her lower body at all. It's really just working on that thoracic spine that we were talking about. Nice job, last one. And I will join you. Why don't you go ahead and sit back in child's pose for a second, just kind of stretch that out a little bit. Take a couple of breaths here. Nice deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. When you're ready, come on up, make sure your alignment is correct again. Everything with both joints stacked, toes into the ground. This one you're gonna do your opposite arm and opposite leg. Try to get as long as you can. Notice me and Serena do turn our palm up towards the ceiling when we're doing these. We don't keep it facing the ground. We want to work on externally rotating at the shoulder since, again, posture, a lot of us are more internally rotated at the shoulder. So think of palm up, thumb up to the ceiling. Trying to get that leg straight while you're kicking back. You should feel your glute activate. It's another great glute activation exercise. You have a lot of powerful muscles in your hip. The glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, they're all going to help you with that swing, but the core has to be nice and strong to help transmit that power from the lower body to the upper body. Last one. Good, one hand behind the head. Drop the elbow towards the wrist, and then push off the mat, opening up the chest towards the wall. Deep breath in, breathe out as you're twisting. Trying to get a little bit more twist each time. Keeping the hips squared, not encouraging any movement with the lower body at all. Let's switch sides. Again, you can note any differences right to left. Maybe do more repetitions or an extra set on that side. And one more. Great, so we 
we did our side lying and our what we call prone on the ground. Then we went into another great primal position called quadruped. Now we're going to do a half kneeling. So we're going to have one leg in front of us, right? Lined up again, knees and ankles in line. The back toes can either stay flat or they can come under for more stability, whichever you prefer. If you're on a yoga mat, you can kind of fold it over, which I'm going to do just to protect the knees. Give you a little extra cushion. So for this one, we're going to start with a twist. So if you have something at home like a stick, a broomstick, or uh, a wooden dowel or something like that, measuring stick, whatever, you can use that. But we're just going to place our hands on our shoulders. And you're going to twist. Again, it's all about twisting and opening up the thoracic spine. Staying nice and tall as if a rope is pulling you up to the ceiling, you're going to twist towards the leg in front of you, trying to keep your hips facing forward again and then come back towards the center. So we're only going in one direction, we're going in the direction of the foot in front, or the leg in front. And each time trying to get a little bit more twist, breathing through it, trying to maintain balance. If you need a little bit more help with balance, you can move your leg a little bit away from your midline, so she can move her foot closer to the outside. That kind of widens your base of support. We're gonna do it two more times. Again, remember what I said at the beginning, pretend like there's a rope pulling you up to the ceiling. You don't want to get short and try to get extra movement out of it. You want to stay tall. You go wherever you can go, right? You're, you're not going to see a ton of extra movement at the beginning, but if you do this frequently, then you're going to see a change over time, but it's going to take a while. You should feel very, very good afterwards, but it's not going to last. <laughs> So now she's going to have the other foot in front. Everything's in line, nice and tall, and she's rotating to the other side. You can change what hand is on top when you switch sides. <laughs> that might feel weird. <laughs> We're used to doing one instead of the other. And breathe through it. Again, remember hips are facing forward. We're not turning toward, at the hips at all. We're just working on the movement of the upper body. one more. Feel free to use any of these exercises that you really notice a difference with before your workout, before your golf game, when you are home after a long day of work. Any of these can be done anywhere, even in between exercises at the gym. They could be used as an active recovery. The next one you're going to just do a stretch. It's called a half kneeling hip flexor stretch. You could do it in between. So since we're in the half kneeling position already, you're just going to come forward with your whole body. So you're not going to bend this knee and come forward like that. You're going to actually try to think of tucking your pelvis under and moving forward that way. What I like to do is if you have the balance, if you don't have balance, you can hold on to either something or your knee. If you have the balance, if you can over stretch, if you can stretch your arms overhead, that'll allow you to stay tall and get that extra pull. And then like Serena's doing, you can grab your left wrist here, which is whatever's opposite the leg in front you can give a side bend as well and you'll start to feel it all down the side of that body and you can kind of back off the stretch and do it again and do it you know a few repetitions breathing through it so we'll do one more on this side and then we'll go ahead and do this on the other side so again if you're going to do that side bend think up and over not necessarily just collapsing to your side switch sides nice and slowly either legs going in front so again, tuck your pelvis under and lean forward, arms over your head. And this time you'd be grabbing the right wrist and bending over to the left side and backing off. Do it again. If you're going to take that side bend, also think about turning your chest towards that wall a little bit so you can get that rotation and that side bend at the same time. Which side we're going to do each one of those one more time. So we're going to start with that half kneeling twist again. So the closer this leg is towards the midline, the harder it is, and the further away, like I was showing you before, the easier it is. So if you want the extra challenge, if you really feel like your balance is improving, you can bring that over towards the midline, and you'll feel yourself start to be way less stable, and that's going to be making it much harder. But again, the, the goal here is to get extra mobility. So if you want to work on balance as you go along, that's fine, but let's concentrate on just trying to get that extra movement. One 
more. Good. I like to hold it at the end of the movement if you can, almost for just like a two second hold, just to really get that end range. Just make sure you keep breathing. I know the inclination is to hold your breath at the end of these movements because they're difficult, but you want to breathe through the difficulty. for the hip flexor stretch. Tuck your pelvis under, arms over your head. If you have that balance, lean forward, feel that stretch down in front of your hip flexor. And if you want that extra side bend, then you're gonna grab onto the wrist, twist open that chest, and bend towards the side. One more time. Tuck the pelvis, come forward, arms overhead, grab the wrist, bend towards the spine. If you know that these are some of your issues, thoracic mobility, core strength, hip mobility, and you would like this to be your warm-up before some of our workout videos, then that would be a great idea as well. It helps individualize your workout. Okay, the last circuit is going to be standing. So again, we've gone through all the primal movements. We've done prone and supine, so laying on the floor. We've done sideline, quadruped, half kneeling. Now we're going to do standing. So the first thing we're going to do is just, actually, you can just move this out of the way completely and get your minivan. So we're just going to use the thicker one at the thigh. I'm just going to use the band that goes around the ankle. I like the ones at the thigh because I feel that when you get closer to your glutes that you activate them a little bit more. You definitely feel the difference when you do them at the ankle and at the thigh. So what you're going to do is you're just going to always keep a little bit of a distance on your feet even when you come together, but you're going to take a step out to the side keeping your toes straight forward and then coming back together. Again, when you come back together, you never fully come back together. We're gonna take three steps in each direction. We're staying low. You should start to feel this on the outside of your glutes. Again, a great glute activator because we need these strong muscles. direction. So three, two. So we'll always keep resistance on the band. And always keep a slight bend in that kind of like a quarter squat. Okay. All right, remove the band. If you need to do this sitting down or on the floor, fine. The last one is called a walkout. So again, full hamstring, lower back, opener. You're going to get core strength out of it. There's a lot of different ways you can progress it, regress it. We're gonna do a traditional walkout. So I'm gonna have Serena walk out towards her, her high plank. So she's going to come into where her wrists, elbows, and shoulders are all in a line. If she wants to, she can open up to almost like a side plank where she's twisting her feet towards one side, opening up to the other side. Again, it works on that thoracic mobility and then walking her hands back towards her feet. If you don't have the mobility, you can bend your knees, right? So I'm gonna have her do the second one where she's bending her knees. But as you do this over and over, try to bend less. Same thing with the way up. You can bend to get towards your feet. You may have to, but over time, you should see some improvement in doing so if you're doing this at enough frequency. But she's gonna do it three more times. Nice job. Again, when she's doing the side one, side twist, she's staying up on this side, right? So she's almost making like a rainbow, an arch there. You don't wanna just sink towards the ground. Each time she's walking out, she's making sure that her joints are stacked, just like we talked about. It's gonna protect her shoulder. And that her plank is a straight plank. If you're unsure if your plank is where it needs to be, we have a how-to plank video that goes over common mistakes and how to correct them. Because you wanna make sure that you're not arching your back, that you're not 
hunching your back over. You wanna make sure that you're in one flat line when you're doing these. So again, if doing this twist is not where you're at right now, then take it out. You can even add a push-up if you'd like, if you wanted to add a little bit more into it. So there's different ways that you can do this. We're gonna go back to our band walks and I'm gonna join you for this second and last exercise. Again, we're gonna do three in each direction. Quarter squat, always resistance on the band. Step out three times towards one direction and then three in the other. And last step. your nice straight plank, opening up to the side, if that's the love you're at, hello. hello. <laughs> it's a lot better when you do this with friends. Yes. <laughs> Less people. video and again this video is about doing this over and over if this is something that you're is not your strength in your golf game you will see improvement over time if you stick with it so great job today thanks for joining uh, Serena and I and we'll see you soon